This is my lovely husband, Dan Beckner. And this is my lovely wife, Alexi Perry. And we're in a band called The Handsome Furs. One little prop of the morning. Well, the creative process for us basically, uh, it, it'll start with either Alexi coming up with a with a drum beat, like a four bar loop or something, or or even just some of the newer songs we came up with just a white noise or some kind of like abrasive noise patch, and then built uh, built a song around them, and then you know that, or we'll start with a guitar figure and some simple singing, and then kind of build a song around that. Usually, when we write songs, it's it's kind of like an unwritten rule that. It doesn't take more than, you know, a full day to get the thing nailed down to the point where we can play it all the way through without, uh, yeah. without fucking up, basically. Yeah. We like working quick and simple. I mean, in, in terms of writing lyrics, like, I'm a, I'm a really firm believer in the rock band or band lyrics do not have to read well on the printed page. I mean, some of them do, and they're amazing, but I, I think in the kind of music that we play and especially like what personally like I want to get across as a, as a performer and an artist it's it's really like it's not to be taken as poetry right off the page you have to hear it sung the, the inflection and the, and the emotion or the delivery of even like a simple word is is what makes the song good you know like I, I think personally like all my favorite bands have that in them like like the band Suicide, you know, like a couple of their songs are three lines long, and 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 you know the way the guy is singing them is it really depends on what stresses he's putting on what words, you know. It, I think I think that's one thing that kind of separates it from from fiction writing, definitely. definitely. The new a lot of the songs on the new record are about we we spent some time in Russia on our last tour, and we really like trying to tour places that. Um, that have like an emerging sort of music scene. It's really exciting to go there because people are kind of starved for music. And I know bands like Animal Collective, you know, are starting to play in Estonia and uh, and, and and Eastern Europe. And we really want to do that, even if it means we lose money. Like it's just really satisfying. So we spent a lot of time in Moscow and and just got like an album's worth of lyric material basically out of it. So it was good. For touring, Canada and the United States are, are fairly comparable until you get, um, occasionally if you get like way down south in the U.S., I think it changes a bit, but it's not bad. It's actually, it's a little more colloquial and less like uh, Live Nation sort of pro stuff. I really like that. Like I like sort of just straight up punk venues, you know? And then, yeah, so Canada and the U.S., basically the same, I'd say. And then as for Europe, I mean, every, every country is pretty different. But uh, England, like, if anybody's, like, got a band and, and their booking agent in Europe is like, you guys got to fucking go play a couple of shows in London and Bristol. I mean, my other band, Wolf Parade, did, like, two and a half weeks in England. It sucks. They don't feed you. Uh, you know, you're competing with a local market that has the NME pumping, like, the next big thing every two months and then trashing them and replacing them with the next big thing. And they're all from England. So you gotta compete with that, plus it sucks. It's we literally had to bribe the consulate, the Russian consulate in Helsinki to get us into uh, to Russia. We had to pay them 350 euros, like slide it under the table and give some dude our passports overnight. And it was cool. It, it, was, it worked it was, out. It was exactly the way you want to experience Russia, I think, you know? Like. <laughs> you know, we had border issues with the United States last year, and it was solved by going through the proper channels and getting threatened with jail time and, like, shelling out $2,600 for fucking one-year work visas because I guess we're taking away money from hardworking American bands like Mudvayne and stuff like that. But, um, but basically to get into Russia was like... They were like, we can't let you in, wink, wink. <laughs> the difference between playing with this band and, and Wolf Parade is, Wolf Parade is at this point like a little more of a production, like to get on the road and, and, and stuff. And creatively it's, I mean, there's a lot of push and pull in Wolf Parade, but that's, it's good, like we're used to it. 
that's that's gonna wonderful, that's a wonderful part that's a it. it's a really wonderful thing to be to be able to go like head to head with everybody else in the band over something and then get it resolved i think it and and, and the difference that's the main difference because with this band we're pretty much on the same page all the time i actually find the shows with handsome first like a lot more uh i get really nervous before the shows because it's it's really just it's riding on just us. well it's yeah, just yeah, me and yeah, alexi it's, it's, so yeah so you know it's there's there's less kind of wall of noise to hide behind i mean not that we know. not not that My we're not wall loud of noise but it's pretty awesome but i mean yeah <laughs> and i and you know with wolf parade i'm singing half of the songs spencer's singing the other half so i get a break every other song this one i just kind of have to <laughs> the montreal scene kind of started with like god's pd black emperor and i don't I, I honestly don't think they get enough credit for it because Bands like Wolf Parade or Arcade Fire or whatever like, would not exist if it weren't for those guys and the fact that they set up venues for underground music to play at. Uh, it must have been the same way with Seattle in the 90s, but like, uh, I, don't, like, I don't know what they think when they move there, that there's some kind of management system in like, place. There's no because... big labels there. Like, it's a weird place to move to try to get a, a, like a foot in. In the door yeah. somehow. I mean, there's great venues and cheap and practice spots, great but, musicians, but and great musicians. Yeah. But but at the same time, most of the bands that have uh, gotten any sort of success in Montreal, like whether it's critical or, or financial or you know even just in Canada, are on American labels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like Arcade Fire, they're on fucking Merge Records. It's not like. Yeah. You know, and that, that actually hurts bands in Canada as a band starting out. If they sign to an American label, they're not eligible for a lot of the grants that are available. So, I mean, it's a, it's kind of a catch-22 moving to Montreal to, like, make yeah. it. <laughs>